to television and radio and to bring it to life. Am I correct? Oh, I want to talk to you about life. It's just too difficult to live, isn't it? To try and um, function. You see, there are all these people to deal with. I was in the supermarket yesterday, and there was this person standing right in front of where I just wanted to reach out and grab a can of tuna fish. And I waited to see if he'd move. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he just stood there reading each ingredient on each can like they were a book. <laughs> well, well, that's a boring book if you ask me. But nobody has. Webster's Dictionary defines crazy as either extremely enthusiastic, or mentally deranged. Urban Dictionary tells us whether we're crazy or not, explaining, if you talk to inanimate objects, you're not crazy. If you hear them talking back to you, <laughs> you are. When I was at a tournament, I saw some kids talking to walls in the hallway. <laughs> but I guess that's what makes us unique. Except for them. <laughs> They're just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing Wild by Christopher Durant. And so I waited a long while and I thought about asking him to move. But then he just seemed so stupid. I mean, he could have sensed that I just needed to get by in order to reach the can of tuna fish. You know, I feared it would do no good. No good at all. You know, you know, he'd probably say something like, like, when we're damn ready, you nagging bitch! <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> and then what would I do? So I, I started to cry quietly. <laughs> so as not to disturb anyone. <laughs> and even though I was softly sobbing, this stupid person didn't seem to grasp the fact that I just needed to get by in order to reach the damn tuna fish. <laughs> <laughs> so naturally, I reached over with my fist, I brought it down real hard on his head, and I said, would you please kindly move? <laughs> <laughs> but the man fell to the ground, and he looked totally startled. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, then, and then some child nearby started to cry, and I was still crying, so I shouted at that child to stop crying! I mean... He was just drawing too much attention to me. <laughs> so I ran out of the supermarket, and I thought, I want to take a taxi to, to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. See, I needed to be surrounded by culture right now. Not tuna fish. <laughs> oh, but you know how hard it is to hail a taxi. So I waved my hand, and then this woman with groceries came out. And she started to hail my taxi. So I went over to her and I said, smack in her ear. If you take this taxi from me, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the woman looked totally starved. <laughs> So I got into the taxi cab and I said, I want to go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I must have culture, quiet, things of value around me. You see, I've had a terrible time in the supermarket. 
And then the driver, who was Greek or, or Muslim or Armenian, was something, said, I have to go downtown now. I'm about to get off work. <laughs> well, see, I thought my head would explode. I mean, I mean, was his taxi available or wasn't it? Well, you know what? At least I'm sitting down. Maybe eventually he'll decide it's just easier to take me to the Metropolitan. Although I started to think, maybe I didn't want to go there anymore. I wanted to see a movie, so I said, I changed my mind. I want to see a movie. And then before I could even ask him for a recommendation, he told me, get this, that he was taking me to the police station. <laughs> and I thought, well, well, okay, but, but isn't he in the wrong? Refusing a fare? Well, I didn't think going to the police station was worth a risk, so when he stopped at a street light violently, might I add, I swung the cab door open and I said straight in his window, your mother sucks. <laughs> sucks. <laughs> in hell. And then he drove off in this terrible hurry. You know, the tire almost went right over my foot. But fortunately, I stepped back right into the gutter. Are you all following this so far? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> so there I was, lying in the gutter, and then this street musician came, and he asked if I needed help, and I said, no, but could you play Melancholy Baby? <laughs> and you know, I I thought that was kind of a funny thing to say regarding the circumstances. <laughs> I thought I had a fair wit and intelligence even if I had been in a mental institution. <laughs> and then I thought, oh, maybe, maybe if this man laughs at my comment, I'll have made a companion for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he looked at me very seriously and asked if I was all right, so I said, you don't really want to know, do you? And he asked if I wanted help to stand up or if I wanted to stay seated in the gutter. And I thought, you know, I don't really know the answer to that question. So I said to him, I don't really know the answer to that question. And he looked at me blankly. You know, things really weren't so bad amid severest woe. What, what, what was that line from? Beckett. Yes, 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 yes. Laughing wild amid severest woe. And he looked at me blankly, so I said, I am laughing wild amid severest woe. <laughs> And all he said was, if you need help getting to a lady's shelter, I will be right over here playing my guitar. <laughs> Let me ask, would any of you give me a job? <laughs> Ever? <laughs> no, no, I can't believe you would. But you know, I've tried to improve my life. No, really, I have. I have fought, I have called people on the phone and said, let me babysit your children. I promise I won't kill them. <laughs> but I don't need them. Because I have the key to existence. And I'm going to tell it to all of you. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear the key to existence? Because when I tell you the key to existence, you will know if you've been living your life to the fullest, or, or if you haven't. You will know exactly how to change that state of affairs so that you are living your life to the fullest because you have the key to existence. <laughs> are you ready?
All right, here goes. Always breathe. <laughs> That's the basis, really. See, see, if you don't breathe, <laughs> you die. <laughs> well, it sounded much more impressive when you haven't slept for two days. <laughs> but even if you are well rested, I still think it's important. Together, ready? In. <laughs> And out. In. And out. Even if I stop, you keep breathing out there, all right? <laughs> Just in and out. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>